Okay, in this video I'm just going to go through an example of counting subsets. So here's the example. We've got Patty. She wants to throw coins into the fountain at the mall. If she has a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, how many sums of money can she throw? So here's the set. The set is the set would be made up of a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. So she has four objects, right? Four objects in her hand, these sums of money. Um, now she, we want to know how many different sums she can throw. Well, any subset of these four elements she could throw, right? She could throw just a penny, just a nickel, just a dime, just a quarter, she could throw the penny and the nickel, the penny and the dime, etc. So there's a lot of combinations she could throw. Really what we want to know is how many subsets are there of the, this original set. Uh, so in the last video we learned a, a quick method to this is to use the fundamental counting principle to look at action one being penny or no penny, right? Throw the penny or don't. Action two would be uh, nickel or no. Action three, let's write the dime and action four would be the quarter or no or no. So there's four actions so there's, for each action, action one, she has how many options? Well, she can throw the penny or she can not throw the penny. So there's two options. Action two, that's the nickel. She has two options. She can throw it or she can not. Action three, she can throw it. I already wrote it. And action four, she can throw it or she cannot. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. So therefore, there are 16 sums of money. Now there's one sort of addition we might want to make to this. Um, and that would be the case. Remember, one of these two options for each one was no for each one. So one of these 16 is the null set. So this includes the null set, which would be throwing no money. This includes null set, i.e she throws nothing. Now in this case, because the question says how many sums of money can she throw, it's almost suggesting she has to throw something. So we might want to subtract the null set because it doesn't make sense to include it as a sum of money because it's not a sum of money. So in this case, we probably want to subtract. So subtract null set. Therefore, 16 minus 1 equals 15 sums of money. And when, you, when, we're, when you're doing questions like this, um, it's going to depend on the context of, the, of this question whether or not you subtract this one, whether or not you subtract the null set. In this case, because it's saying how many sums of money can she throw, 
you're assuming she is throwing a sum of money, so you subtract the null set. But in some cases, it might make sense to include the null set. Um, so here's another example. It's just a modification of that previous example. Now she has four pennies, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. So the difference here is now she has four pennies instead of just one penny. So how is that going to change things? Well, now action one is going to have more options, right? Remember before, she could throw the penny or she could not. Well, now she could throw one penny. two pennies, three pennies, four pennies, or she could actually throw no pennies. So there's actually now how many options is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five options. So there's four pennies, but she has five options. So for action one, you're not going to multiply by two, you're going to multiply by five. And then action two is the nickel. Well, she only has the one, so that's the same. She can throw it or she can not. So there's still two, act, two possibilities. Action three would be, uh, again, two actions, and action four would again be two actions, so throw the quarter or not. So this was five pen four pennies, so one, two, three, four, or none, so it's five. Uh, one nickel, so either zero nickels or one nickel, so there's two options. Zero dimes or one dime, so two options, and zero quarters or one quarter, so two options. And then again, we're going to subtract the 1, as we did in the case before, because we don't want to include the null set. So this would be 40 minus 1, which is equal to 39. So therefore, uh, 39 possible sums, or sums of money. And our last part, part C, so here you've got four pennies, two quarters, one nickel, one dime. So this will be action one. So same as above, right? You have four pennies, so that's five options. One, two, three, four, or none. So that's five times two quarters. So you have, if you have two quarters, that means one quarter, two quarters, or zero quarters. So three options. So you're going to multiply by three. One nickel, so that's zero or one. So you're going to multiply by two. And then one dime. Again, multiply by two. And then we'll subtract one for the null set because you have to so throw something. So we would just multiply all these numbers, which would be 60 minus one, which would be 59. So therefore, 59 possible sums. The end.